What's up, everybody? Welcome to the live composing show. I hope you are doing absolutely fantastic. Hold on. There's music playing in the background, and I don't know why. We'll have to solve that in just a moment. But regardless, oh, I think I know what's happening. I think there's a doubling of audio that I need to solve. There we go. My bad. Sorry about that, guys. Well, welcome welcome to the live composing show. My name is Stephen Malin. I'm a music composer for video games. I'm so glad you're here. Um, I want to give a quick little um, just kind of life update, uh, so a career update, and then we'll jump into the meat of today, getting to write for some Fire Emblem music, which I'm super excited about. A couple things I want to talk about, really three things I want to talk about. The first thing is, let me pop this over here in my desktop just so I can show you something super cool. I think this is really cool. For those of you who don't know, uh, I made a, a post about this earlier this week, but I am officially part of the Recording Academy Grammys member class, which, hooray, that's something I've been wanting to be a part of for, I don't know, eight years of being a professional. Um, and what that, that means is officially I can vote on upcoming Grammy nominations, I can nominate, and then I can also receive a Grammy award should that time come. So the whole purpose behind that is now that I'm stepping into more, um, just more game soundtracks and such, the goal, one of my like really big goals is to win a Grammy for a video game soundtrack because no one's ever done it. Austin Winery got close a few years back when he worked on Journey, he got a nomination. Um, and actually this year for the next award season, um, the, there's a brand new category for video games and video game music for original soundtracks, which I'm super excited about. And that's just a huge, huge deal for video game industry in general, that kind of the mass media and, and public persona um, is starting to recognize the value of the art form of video game music. So hooray, I just think that's super cool and interesting and a fun little development uh, for this week. Aside from that, um, two things I want to talk about before we jump in. Uh, the first thing is if you have not heard about the Video Game Music Alliance, that is a group that I started back in January of this year, 2022, six months ago. And it is a, a membership group for video game composers to level up in composition, production, technology, and business. It's something I've talked about for six months. Um, and it's been a huge, huge deal for all the, the men and women who have decided to jump in and, and take the plunge. And I wanted to let you guys know that officially, as of next week, July 4th week, we're going to be opening up for the next 
um, the next enrollment for people to come in and check it out. So I'll be talking more about that um, when we get closer to that time, but that's only a few days away. So I know a lot of you have expressed interest in that. And if that sounds like something that'd be interesting for you, there is a link right here. Boom. It's on the screen, but it's also in the description below. Just go to videogamemusicalliance.com and there's a waitlist link there where you'll be the first to be notified as soon as we do open the doors uh, and we intentionally keep this tightly knit. We don't open up all the time because we want to make sure that everyone that's involved gets to move along together as we walk through our master classes, our live Q&A calls, our, um, our course materials. And there's a brand new course coming out about how to build effective game music packs and get those suckers sold in all the major game marketplaces and, and all the things involved. Um, you can check that out at the link and you can learn all about that and, and what's involved in that process. I won't, uh, you know, I'll spare you the time right now, but a lot of you ex have expressed interest, and um, if that sounds like you, make sure you do join that wait list. That way, I can actually get to talk to you um, as soon as that is open, and you don't get left behind. So I hope that is super valuable for you guys. And there's also a free guide that you get. Um, it's called Secrets to My Six-Figure Video Game Music Business, where I walk through the 10 steps that we all walk through as a group to increase our branding and our marketing and our awareness and working with clients and all the things I've condensed it down into a one page, maybe it's two pages, a document that just kind of walks you through the, the nuts and bolts of what it looks like to build a career in 2022 as a game composer. So I hope that that's super valuable for you guys. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is something I want to start doing as part of these streams is whenever I'm preparing for the stream and I open up my, my Cubase session and I'm you know loading my video and all the things that I do to prepare, I want to get better about sharing with you guys which sample libraries I'm using for this specific piece of music. Um, every single week that I've done this live composing show, inevitably somebody asks, hey, can you give me a list? Or hey, what, what sample instruments did you use on that piece of music? I'm really interested. Um, nothing wrong with asking that question, but I just wanna be more prepared to help you guys answer that question faster. So what I've done is in the description below, you'll notice that I've listed out all of the plugins, at least so far, that I'm, I'm planning to use that are currently in the session. Um, and, and specifically, these are um, sample libraries that are actually on sale. Things like Tokyo Scoring Strings, Cinebrass, Ministry of Rock, Ozone, right? These are things that I'm actively using, and I want to show you how I use them. Um, all of those are affiliate links that support my channel when you purchase. No additional cost to use. Thank you so much for that support. Um, and right now, this is a crazy, crazy, like, three, four weeks of summer sales across just about every sample library company. So there are two times a year that you should buy sample libraries. Summer, usually around this June, July period, and then November, um, Black Friday. Those are the two times that companies go bananas, bonkers, and they discount their stuff 40%, 60%. They just go crazy. So if there's a certain sample library that um, you've been waiting on, I know a lot of you've been talking about Tokyo scoring strings when it first launched. It's a pretty high price. So um, that is on discount right now. Um, things like, you know, Cinebrass, this, this stuff is crazy. It's like 65% off right now. It's insane. So if that's something that you've been looking at for a while, but your budget's been tight, this might be the time to do that. So anyway, um, without further ado, let's move on with the show. I just want to let you make, sure, make sure that you are aware of those things in the description. Hopefully that is helpful for you. Um, and let's move forward. Uh, so today I'm taking a slightly different <laughs> genre approach. Um, I don't have a ton of experience writing anime style music. I have done it and I've done it as a professional. Um, and it's always, it always surprises me, <clears throat> number one, that I'm actually good at it. And number two, I enjoy it. Um, it. It's just not, I don't watch anime, but I enjoy it. And every time I've watched anime or I've like watched a series or, or played a game that has very strong Japanese anime vibes, I really like it. And it's super campy. And it's super cheesy. And, and, you know, crazy suspension of disbelief, but there's something about it that is just fun. And I feel like Fire Emblem Warriors falls in that category. Um, I actually played the demo on my Switch, which is completely free, by the way. So you can play, and I think it's like a three-hour demo. I only played it for an hour, but it just kept going on. And I'm like, dang, either I'm going to buy this thing or not play it. So I don't like investing in a demo and then actually buying the game. You have to redo it. Um, 
but yeah, this this particular game is is insane. It it, it has no logic behind it. Um, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of Fire Emblem uh, Three Houses, but this is did I say that right? Three Houses. That's what it's called. Yeah, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses. I played it. I played the whole thing, put like eighty hours into it, and I enjoyed it sort of. Um, I think I'm a hardcore original Fire Emblem fan. I like the first five or six games in this series, and then I've kind of fallen off. But I, there's something very special about this game that I can't quite put my finger on. I think it's because of how insanely ridiculous it is. Um, it kind of takes the engine and the the model of Hyrule Warriors, the Zelda game where it's like hash, hack and slash, beat them up. And you can even just see from this picture right here how insane this is. Like, just watch, I don't know, let me see if I can like do a mute button. I have to like mute everything. Hold on a second. Like just watch ten seconds of this and of the insanity. Like what is this? Six hundred and five hits. 44,000 damage. What the heck? Like, that is absolutely stupid, but that's what makes it fun. So you have to kind of enter in today, kind of like going to see Transformers or something or a Marvel movie. There, there is a insane amount of suspension of disbelief. It's like no one believes this. It's so illogical. It makes no sense, but that's the fun of it. It's campy. So it, maybe not as hard as like Persona, um, I've never liked the Persona games, but I, I, there is a certain charm. There's a certain um, Japanese flair about it. So with all that said, I just think it's funny. And I thought this would be a fun style to explore today. And so I'm specifically going to be leaning into a rock orchestral vibe. And there are some rules you got to follow if you want to sound like this. And I do think that these specific sample libraries that we're talking about today really gel together to make the sound work. So what I want to talk through, I spent a little bit more time than I should have, honestly, um, preparing. Uh, about an hour ago, I, I started piecing together the, the libraries I wanted to use and everything. And I ended up writing for like 30 minutes. And I'm like, no, 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 stop. I'm supposed to do this live in front of you guys. Um, <laughs> but I just got so carried away. And I didn't even like, you know, scratch the surface of what I could do with this track. But it's just so fun and so um, inspiring. So w the way that I did this was I watched the clip a few times and I just kind of got a basic understanding of what is the sound. So let's listen together and dissect what is actually going on musically. <laughs> Alrighty. Oh, I love that. I love that they keep the, the level up. That's in every Fire Emblem game, that little uh, jingle. So here's what I hear. And having played the demo and having played uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, it's, it's the exact same music style. It may It's probably the same composer because I even heard some of the same themes being used. Um, and yeah, Jay Metzer says it sounds like Attack on Titan. That's actually a very, very similar um, style. It's that orchestral anime rock. So what I hear is I hear a lead electric guitar. I hear power chords behind that. I hear some like chuggy, dun, 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 kind of the typical rock instrument instrumentation. But I also hear a bass in the background, kind of following the chord structure. I hear uh, drums, specifically uh, double bass kick. Just like hyper energy. Well, minus the cowbell. <laughs> kind of just hyper. It's not quite metal, but it's um, just hyper, hyper energetic. I actually hear some choir in the background. I hear strings. That 
kind of things, kind of chuggy short strings. Uh, that's Adagietto by 8DO. Forgot to put that in the, the, the chat the description. Um, specifically for the legato strings, which are always doubling in octaves, first violin is a super duper high octave. Oh, what is it? Um, na, na, ah. Uh. So that's the Fire Emblem Three Houses main theme. And they put a rock beat behind it. So that doubles with the electric guitar. And then it's doubled one more time an octave lower using the violin two. So I can't think of a better sample instrument to use than the literal musicians who literally played on this game, um, which is the Tokyo Scoring Strings, which is a real ensemble in Japan that records on all of the anime series, all of the Japanese video games, uh, especially the Fire Emblem series is what they're most known for. So that is literally the patch, the thing. It's kind of like if you were writing something to sound like Journey, Austin Winery's Journey soundtrack, you would use the Tina Guo solo cello legato library from 8 Deal because that's the literal musician that played those solo moments in Journey. Does that make sense? So it's important to me, if I'm gonna to try to use the exact style, go find out who actually recorded the thing and see if there's a sample library that's already that already exists. And, and nowadays, one of the big catches of sample instruments is people are actually going after the artists themselves because how many more solo cello libraries can exist before they're no longer interesting? So instead, having the Tina Guo library is super special because we know who that is. We know what she sounds like when she's doing the Wonder Woman theme for Hans Zimmer, right, on the electric cello. So to have that exact library is really cool because we know exactly in our heads what she already sounds like. Same goes for... Uh, Joshua Bell, if you're going for a very classical sound, you use the Imbertone, right? So there's there's these different libraries for a reason. No library solves all problems, but I specifically chose libraries today that I think match this style perfectly. So moving on, that's going to be a huge highlight today is using the strings because that's like the heart of the orchestra. Moving on, I'm using Cinebrass today for trumpets, horns, and low brass. So these patches, they are loud, they're monstrous, they're in your face, but that's the style. Let me find it. So this will be doubling the melody as well. Have to hold my pedal down to get legato. And it actually by itself sounds pretty awful, but that's not the point. It's what does it sound like in the context? So if you were to double all of these things, right, when you start doing choir, the lead guitar, the violins, the trumpets, the horns. starts to sound freakishly like it. Right? Now, that was awful because they're not supposed to be played all together like that. But you get the idea of how layering these things together creates this huge, epic, orchestral anime rock sound, and it's just so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I want to I respond to Eric, who says uh, the Tokyo scoring strings is very computer strenuous. Yeah, they can be. You just got to be smart about how you use them. For this track today, I'm specifically only using the Viol one, Violin 1 Legato, Violin 2 Legato, and I'm leaving that alone. I'm also being very smart with my resourcing by 
using aux channels for my reverb. So I literally have one reverb channel. It's right here in Cubase. I'm using 2C Aether, 100% wet, Music Hall 2. And then I'm using a strings aux and a brass aux. Just kind of routed everything to be uh, sound like an orchestral hall, which is the whole point. So there you go. Um, so before I go any further, I have to say hi. There's so many people here today. I love it. What's up, Micah, Andre, Matt, Mr. Game Guy, Alan. What's up, Alan? Who else we got? Eduardo, Will. What's up, Will? Hope you're feeling better. I know that you you were a little under the weather recently. Marie, what's up? Ju. Uh, man, so many you guys are awesome. We've got Eric, Jay Metzer. I always call him Jay Metzer. I forgot your first name, but I'm just gonna call you Jay. Hope, hope you understand. Toe Gap Demo, Broken G String. Glad you guys are here. Man, you're just chatting up a storm about Fire Emblem and stuff and Tokyo scoring strings and all kinds of stuff. And Matt, other Matt, David, you guys rock. Thanks for being here. Um, this is gonna be a fun one because I don't write enough in this style and it's just so exciting. Uh, so here's how I want to proceed. I want to show you some of the, the little snippets that I've come up with so far, and then I definitely want to produce it and, and make it sound full and rich. Uh, but at least I've shown you basically what I'm using. I guess I didn't quite go into the electric guitars. I'm using an ancient library today, but it still holds up. It's the Ministry of Rock 2 from East West. Um, if I'm not going to physically play an electric guitar, which I can-ish. What's up, Gooey Pikachu and Casper? What's up, guys? Um, if I'm not going to physically play guitar, I'm, I'm like mediocre at guitar. So sometimes I'll do it. I'll go through the, the painstaking process of actually recording the thing. And I might do that today. I just, I, it takes so long. Um, it might be worth it, but, but in short, if I want something that is still MIDI based while I'm still trying to figure out things like tempo and key, and I just haven't fully committed to recording the instrument then I'm gonna use Ministry of Rock because it, even though they're not the best samples in the planet, they're good and they work because I really like that it contains guitar, bass, and drums and all sorts of assortments. I'll show you the patch real quick. Um, again, this is old stuff, but it has basses, drums, and guitars. And I do like that the basses are like rock basses. Uh, specifically, you can choose between pick and fingered for all of them and they are five string. So they go have that low B just like my bass, my Warwick bass that I have. The drum kits are pretty good. Uh, they're very metal based, which is what I want. And then the guitars, they have your pop guitars, but I'm, I'm really going for. Whoops. Ah, poop. Give me a sec. Pardon that. Uh, my camera is having uh, like software update issues. I haven't quite solved it. It turns off, which is stupid. It turns off like every 30 minutes, but we're going to suffer through it together. Um, but in the guitars, we have some interesting things. I like how they're divided by lead and rhythm, so you can get like rhythm, ch -ch 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 chuggy chugs, or you can get the lead. Um, anyway, let's do some stuff. Can we, can we write some stuff? So I just have some snippets. They're not quantized. They're not good yet, but these are just ideas of the area I'd like to explore. So some of the th first stuff I came up with was this little chord progression in the strings. actually pretty close to being quantized. So what I'm going to do, let me see if eighth notes can handle it. Yeah. So all I'm doing, the idea here is to follow a I'm in A minor, so six, one, four, five. Six, one, four, but then go somewhere. Like, it's the D minor, which is a two, but end on a, 
an E, which is a five, or maybe even do an inversion. Kind of hovering around. Um, the thing about Fire Emblem music is it's overtly happy, even though. It, it, but the way it feels cool is it uses a lot of minor chords, so it's kind of pop in that way. So I'm trying to stay within A minor, F, because if F is the four chord. I should also mention that to cut through the mix, I'm using Over the Top, which is a free plugin. OTT, go get it right now by Xfer. If you ever want your strings to pop in the mix and not get totally buried by all of the loud stuff, this is really good for loud music, trailer music, etc. Epic music, I'm using everything around the 20% range. I have a small bump on the highs, small bump on the lows, and I meant to do a small decrease on the mids. What it does, it just makes it. Listen to it without it. Like it's very wimpy. As soon as you pop it on, it is heavy. Super cool. I love that plugin. Don't overuse it because it's basically compression. It's like the damage button on, not tum, the punish button on heaviosity libraries, which is super cool. Anyway, so that was my first idea. And then I want to throw a lead guitar on it. of a hot mess right now but the idea is to have this sweeping melody line it kind of hovers around that harmonic progression um, so I'm, I'm going to take a second to clean this up because I want to double it in the strings so it does matter to really be quantized well so let's just take a minute to do it Maybe the best way is to use eighth notes as my um, quantization amount. It's actually pretty good. And hey, I want to uh, respond to Eduardo who says he suggests I take myself, bam, off the screen when I'm showing Cubase stuff, I do that. I try to do that. Basically, if my mouse ever goes down here, I'll make sure that I show it here. Yeah, but I also like to show, you know, my hands at the keyboards and whatever. So I, I'm trying to use my cameras to the best of the allowed space on screen, because I actually have three screens running right now. So that's how I prefer to work. Oh, that worked really well. I was not expecting the eighth note quantization to work so well. Cool. Let's fix this. We go. Da -da -da -dum 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 -dum. Does it really not go that high? 
Da, 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 da. That's fake. Oh well. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 bum, bum. You can't really hear what's in my head, but hopefully you can at least imagine kind of the, the big bombastic orchestra behind this. This should be later. So... Cool. I like that a lot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the beginning of that little section. I'm going to copy that into the strings, respectively. I'm going to make sure that the strings are higher. So we're going to go full octave higher. Actually, no. We'll make sure that the second violin is an octave lower. How's that? And then I want to make sure that together we make sure that the violins, which have a tendency to be sluggish, we might want to do like a negative 50 milliseconds as a starting point to see if we can line them up on the tempo. And amazing, even though it's a stupid, awful sounding guitar, because it's doubled with other things, and we'll soon add brass as well, it sounds great. You can actually turn it down a little bit. It sounds really good all together, and it sounds like exactly like what they do in the, in the game. Yeah, I mean, you have to have the groove. You have to have the, the chords and everything behind it, but that's cool. So now let's see what it sounds like. Let's just kind of build the blocks here. These are just ideas. Um, this is not ready. Let's just start here. And I intentionally wanted to like just go just plow straight through to have like a really long melody, which I think is nice in this style. Cool. So maybe now let's see what the power chords sound like when we label them on top. So power chord is a fifth. Try to sneak those under. This is the most anime thing in the history of anime, is when you do a minor five. So you do, I guess you could call it two, uh, sorry. I don't even know what key we're in anymore. I guess if if we're going with C major, this would be a, a two, so minor two, minor three. Or if we are calling this A minor, this would be a minor four, instead of to a major five, it'd be a minor five. Go back to one. Super anime. This is the most anime chord ever. And then 
just to change it up, and because I freaking love 6-4 time, I want to have a little bridge of 6-4 time because it just it's a cool chuggy line. That would be 7-4. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, Demo, the key of anime is A minor. It really is. Um it just works really well with the orchestra mixed with the the band, the rock band. Um, so there's a reason behind that. It sonically sounds really good. Now we can get some bass in there. I just grabbed the rock bass, which has uh, I did pick instead of finger, just to give it a little more edge. <laughs> good bass line to match these power chords. That's good for now, just to kind of keep the pulse of the strings. Also a very fire emblem sound is to take just strings like that and just chug away non-stop eighth notes. That's dumb. Who does that? I want to save the double bass for this bridge. I gotta find my beat though. <laughs>
good beat. We'll add some symbols at the end because that's only two feet and a snare. We'll have to add more. I'm gonna do this slow so that Cubase doesn't fry in quantization later. hard beat to play. Oh, it's almost e almost easier faster. I can play it better faster. <laughs> Start with that. It's not too bad. It's uh, 16th notes. We're just at 170 BPM. Can you talk, can you say that? <laughs> say that five times fast. It just gets so crappy right in here. Cool. I feel like this is the right rhythm. So I want to make sure that these double bass they keep happening even here. So I want to fill in any of the blank spots. Wait, just keep on coming. So what I'm doing is copying and pasting to all of the blank spots by putting my cursor there, hitting paste. Try to get them all. So there's no dead space. Do do do. Almost got them all. all right, one more, I think. All right, let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> I feel like the drums are too forward. Isn't that funny? All right, so this has to have some. Some symbols in there. Those are all eighth notes. Excellent. Let's merge all the things. Choppy chop. Like that. That should feel good. So this definitely needs some kind of chuggy chug happening. <laughs> Thank you. 
looks like some palm mutes. Chuggy Chugs. Yank, 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 yank. Just hang on that A. Because it works. All righty. So the other thing is these strings are, they feel off. Let me just listen to them. Bet it's because they're not quantized, right? Aha! There's my culprit. It's an entire beat off. That would that will do it. that because it actually that was not intentional but I like how I made that two four four bars it actually gets it back into you could loop it if you want but whatever the next thing's gonna be is now in four four time like before so here what I'll do is just add two beats to fill it out that should make it work drums We'll make sure that this little guy gets filled in with the kick drum. Splendidly, we got things so far. Not bad for 45 minutes of writing. This is actually quite good so far. Uh, it's a bunch of segments, but. some rock beat in there for sure. So my trick, or at least my strategy for writing drum parts is I like to do the kick and snare as one pass and then the hi-hats and cymbals on a second pass. That way I can use my two fingers to just focus on Right? Kick and snare are kind of its own instrument, and then like that. Uh, use the drums, or use the second pass for the cymbals and um, hi-hats. So let's try that. Time. 
time. Yeah, that <laughs> there's a cowbell hiding in there. <laughs> Does not belong. Kind of funny. Um, so here, I just want to clean up. Hopefully those can all be eighth notes. I'm not sure. I have a feeling they're not going to be. I think they're sixteenths. Ugh, these get so messy so fast. Gross. So what I'm gonna do is I just quantized all of the non-double uh, kick drum moments as eighth notes. That way they all get a little bit cleaner. Also really needs some chugs. So let me just solo these guys because we're getting a little, it's getting a little thick in the production, which is fine. I'm gonna make sure we can hear everything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the um, guitars and spread them out. So lead should be center. I'm gonna make the power chords. Um, let's do 45 left. Oops. And then the other, we're gonna do 45 right. Give me two seconds. Alrighty, and then we will see if we can get those to sound even. <laughs> turn up the volume a lot on that one but we want to try to make these as even as we can knowing that it's not really a real band but you know we're entering sonic territory now <laughs> just a little sneak peek i will be tackling sonic frontiers later this year Let's keep going. This is great. Um, trumpets. I just want to double the melody. Um, I might just do it. Like it instantly feels like Fire Emblem when you combine octave strings 
with electric guitar and brass. Just it just instantly does. Some kind of instrumentation change here, or oh, it's going to sound too samey. So I'm wondering if, like, the second half. Hmm. Some mixed emotions here. Has to be a change here. It's pretty good. Let's edit it ever so slightly, get it in sync with everything. Next. With my limited palette, that that was that turned out better than I thought. Gorgeous, man. Cinebrass knows what's up when it comes to just. It's loud, but it's nice. I'm 
wondering if I can just do like half. So one of the questions from Sarah was, how do I keep from being too repetitive? Well, you shouldn't do anything the same way twice. That's my philosophy. So here we have the electric guitar needs to carry the melody the whole time, but what supports it, I think, should change. So my hunch is to kill the first violin on the first pass and use it as the octave jump the second half. Same thing with the trumpet. Like anything high should be used for the second half. Um, but we'll go ahead and get the horns in there to, to set the tone. Here's what I need to do. Da, 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 bum, bum. All right, horns there. Um, so if I kill the trumpets, I need to make sure that they're... We gotta get their model up. So you hear how it's way more heroic now because we started in the low octave and the second repetition we kept it going, but then added the, the second octave on top with firsts and trumpets. And it might also help to do some brass stab. second half. So I'm going to double the bass with low brass stabs. So cool. Uh, what's up, Arfo? Welcome in. So the bass here. Ah, then I need to switch to Legato. So let's try that. And we'll crank it up just a little bit to get better in the mix. Here we go. going to add so much in a second. Um, I like that a lot. That's the first time in my life I've ever doubled an electric bass with brass. That's cool. What a cool combo. Or 
to make this section work, here's what I need. I need to continue doubling the trumpets because we've already established that weight. So I'm going to pull those here, connect them all together. Um, the trumpets just need to continue being loud. Mod wheel all the way up. Let's make sure. Yep, looks good. Thanks, Arfo. So from here, I think we should use horns. Like this. Um, instead of a single, single notes, we'll do triads. And before I just get into a horror show of MIDI, I'm going to call this Horns Melody and Horns Ensemble, just so that we're clear and I can mix it separately, differently, whatever, different mod wheel. I don't have to worry about it. So here we go. basic mixing. I'm going to turn those drums down. They're just too loud. I'll turn the strings up a little bit. Do the same thing here just so we can have more control. I'm gonna call this low brass short, low brass long, and I'm just gonna divide these up so that I don't even have to screw around with the audio itself. You can just play with the MIDI, keep it rolling like this. Anytime you can separate stuff, it's just easier because these longs are way too loud compared to the shorts, where which I do want to be loud. <laughs> Dark Dice is coming through. All right, let's clean up this beginning, which I never even showed you guys. Um, this little idea I had was to do, I always think of Mario. Which is the When you take an arpeggio, like a C major, and then you start on an inversion. All right, that's the old classic. So here I'm going. A minor. F. Uh, G. 
Roxy. Sarah, I don't really have time to answer that huge question about game music packs, but I'll let you know that I am actually releasing a brand new course about how to create game music packs from start to finish, all the steps in between, and I've simplified it into seven steps to make it super, super simple and little homework assignments for each one to make sure you actually get from the starting point to the finish line, and that will release next month in July. That's actually a $500 course that will be available for anyone interested, standalone, but for those inside the Video Game Music Alliance, it'll be for free. Woohoo! All of our courses and stuff is free inside there. So hooray, maybe that'll be interesting for you, help you answer a lot more of those questions you might have. Just want to throw that out there, a little aside. All right, this is ugly, 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 ugly. Uh, but you get the idea. Eighth notes. I like that. I like that it's high. So my idea was to take that as an intro and then add choir on top and to keep a pedal A on bottom like this. Uh. mentioned that writing for choir is my my favorite thing in the planet to do writing for strings is my second favorite thing to do i used to sing in choirs i just i love everything about a choir because it is like the most human musical thing imaginable because it's literally humans expressing words and text and and just it's so powerful and epic and ah by the way um, I'm not sure if I can invite you yet. I'm going to have to get permission. But if I can invite you guys, I have another choir session in August coming up for something I'm doing with a certain someone. <laughs> I'm being super vague. But it's a super cool, awesome, big deal. I'd have to get all kinds of clearance to make sure I can publicly say anything. But holy heck, you want to be there if you can, and I'm going to try to make it possible. So much. <sighs> okay, by the way, I haven't talked a lot about this plugin before. I recently rediscovered this. I was looking for a super powerful choir for a movie trailer I was doing, and I, I rediscovered Requiem Light, which is this really, really old plugin. It's like 15, 20 years old, but I've never used anything quite as powerful as this. So I actually put it in the link in the description below where you can still grab it from Best Service, which is super cool. Um, I love that they have a lot of vintage plugins on there. They even have stuff from the early 90s and 80s, which is incredible. Um, it's actually where I've gotten a lot of my um, retro VGM stuff because they just have a database that goes all the way back to the origins of sample libraries. Um, but this thing is so freaking amazing, and I, I've been using it on almost everything. It's not good for quiet. It can't be quiet. Like, that's the quiet. 
loud. But it's super good for loud, epic, this kind of thing. in there. All right, I want to leave a break for the choir. I don't want to go overboard. So here's what I shall do. I'm going to double just to save myself the headache of doing all that MIDI again. I'm going to copy the electric guitar lead here. Make sure it all translates properly. Let me get it down a couple octaves because no human can sing that. <laughs> Like this. Here's another perfect example of by itself, this sounds like garbage, but the beauty of combining all these elements together is you're just getting the timbre, the tone, the color of a particular sound, which is choir and human text. And even though it's kind of gibberish Latin, you combine that together with the other melodies going on and nobody cares. Like it, it all works. <laughs> Of drums. Something. question from um, Jay Metzer. So, hey, I'm all for helping people with, with lower budgets. So the thing with the VGM Alliance, um, it is intended 
this is my personal philosophy. Um, and I've heard this from other course makers and community makers, and I totally agree with this. <clears throat> Members come for the content and they stay for the community. And what that means is it's important whenever there's a membership group of any kind that there is already readily available content on there. It's also important that there's new content coming every single month to gauge interest and to obviously keep serving the people inside with all their top questions and all the things they need help with. But the third component is the community. And that is something that we're actively working on, even growing our engagement with one another, things with our things like our, our composing challenges and bringing on master classes and helping each other with different assignments and whatever. So it's one of those things that uh, by all means, come try it out for a few days. It actually starts with a free trial. That way you can just kind of come consume the content and check out the people and see if it's a good fit. Um, but more importantly than that, it's designed to constantly add value and constantly um, connect you with other people. And I think one of the coolest stories so far that's come from the group is there are two guys in the group that have actually partnered together to form their own audio company and they're now putting out game music packs and making money. Um, and that came from just organic connections within the group. And it kind of reminds me of, you know, the YouTube channel here and the, the Discord community. You guys just, you connect with each other and we get to kind of rally around video game music as a starting point. But then, you know, we learn about the cool things that we have in common. Like I know Ju and uh, Maria are always talking about, I guess, Japanese and like like language. And then sometimes food conversations come up and then people are talking about Smash Brothers and whatever. It's like, you know, we all, we all rally for one reason, but then we make connections with one another. So I'm really big on forming community. Um, and it's not about getting the community to be as big as possible. That's never been the goal, but rather to, to make it as deep as possible and as valuable as possible. Um, and I think that is certainly the case with what we've done so far. It's not a large group and it's not really supposed to be, oh no, see, I knew it was going to happen again. Gee willikers. <laughs> the camera is the, the comic relief today. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's just a genuine community of people who, who are all wanted, wanted to chase this thing called video game music business together. So lots of cool, exciting stuff happening there. Um, so please keep asking your questions. And if nothing else, come try it out. Come see if it's a good fit for you. And it opens next week. And then it's going to close again for a long time because we try to keep it really tight knit. And that's the whole point. Alrighty, um, I'm really close to a coffee break. I need some more coffee, but let's see if I can get like one more thing done and then we'll break for a second. I wanted to try to get this intro nailed. Digga, 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 digga. That's what, that's what it needs. It needs a classic... Digga, 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 digga. You know, technical term. Um. <laughs> digga, 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 digga. One of those. Digga, 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 diggas. 30 second notes, toms. Ticka, 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 ticka. Actually, they're 16th notes. Hooray. I don't have to try too hard. But I am going to like quit, like really intensely quantize them like this. And try to get that in there. It's just like a little uh, swell. <laughs> You know, every anime has it. It's the intro. It's the hook. Get you in. Digga, 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 digga. Just be eighth notes. There we go. 
Oh yeah, that needs straight up needs. starting to get there it's not there like there's a certain production level i want to get this to and we're just not there we're getting close and i might just make this one minute loop just so it's i can get a higher quality piece of music out of this That part needs some energy. We'll come back and do that in just two minutes. Don't go anywhere. Enjoy the music. See you in a sec.
Hello friends, welcome back to the Live Composing Show. This has been a fun day so far. I feel like we're a little over halfway done. Um, got all the melodies and such in place for this Fire Emblem Warriors rescore. It's looking to be about a one minute track. I think in an ideal world I want this to be more like two to three minutes long before it loops, but we don't have the time for that. So that's okay. I think we've established the purpose and this will make a nice little loop in a game music pack later anyway, so I think it, it works. Another reason why I want to get to the melody so fast um, and not beat around the bush and just boom, you know, go for it. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's gone well so far. Let's continue. Got my coffee. Hath been acquired, so I'm ready to rock. So what I want to do is try to beef up this section. It's missing a lot of energy. Um I think it could it could definitely use something. <laughs> I find that trumpet to be very annoying in this moment. So maybe... Let's get rid of it for now. can always copy it back. fly leave my coffee alone you guys ever have flies land in your coffee that is the saddest thing ever not today <laughs> hmm what to do with this little section I like it it's just out of energy so maybe we'll start with drums to beef it up and kind of go from there <laughs> That's what I should do. Just keep the beat going, but but bring it down. Especially with the snare or toms. session on the drums. Let's uh, get this sucker ready. This is the same drum beat as Final Fantasy VIII. Bum, to bum, bum, to bum, 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 bum. I think Man with a Machine Gun. This part needs TLC. So maybe we can do this. We can get the cymbals, the hi hats rather. Quantize. This part just needs a little help. Yeah, let's do four snares. Let's 
Maybe we just need snares here. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Let's do that instead. Little boy. Oh, I don't have, uh, <laughs> I don't have any, uh, hi-hats or cymbals here. I said I was going to go back and do a second pass, and I never did it. Whoops. Let's do that right now. Uh, with the whole ensemble, please. There we go. There's my splash symbol I've been looking for. That adds so much depth to this. Wowzer, wowzer, wowzer. Bowser, Bowser, Bowser. All right, boom, boom. Just got to get that cleaned up. Do not like that one. Just get all these. Uh, if I can find them. Come on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now you can see them. I'm just adding these beautiful symbols which should have been there all along. some of uh, these symbols right here on the big moments. Same thing, let me add these symbols. It's kind of the same thing as using an orchestral symbol. It helps to separate the sections. And just for today's purposes, let's make that the loop point. Let's set the looper right there. Let's make sure it feels good. Oops, my quant. There we go. My grid was off, so it was not working. All right, how about now? <laughs> That's a really good loop. I was not expecting that to work. But the whole thing's in A minor, so ending on a five chord, the dominant leads back to the tonic. The five goes to the one. It just works, guys. It's an age-old music theory trick. It is one of the best ways to end a loop. I wasn't even planning on being a loop point, but cool. <laughs> oh, man, this needs a way. Right? It needs like, oh, it makes me want to pull up the guitar, but then I'll be here for an hour trying to play these lines. Like it needs one of those. So let me just, just take a second. Uh, let me go through the little library here of, oops. I don't want to screw up my routing. 
Let me just duplicate one of these bad boys. Let me see if I can find just like a, an effect. A, gl a gliss is really what I'm looking for. Wee! Like that. Again, my technical terms are on point today. Let me see if I can find something. I have no idea what I'm going to find in this. Hey, <laughs> thanks, Marie. You know my pitches. Something like that. And we could always add distortion or something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. Let's add distortion. This literal, straight up distortion from Cubase. There it is. Use that mod wheel. Let's pop it into the center. Like that. Turn it down. up. The thing is, if I go play a real guitar, it, it won't match the other, all the MIDI guitars I'm already using, so just live with it. It actually really works because it goes into the, the lead. Kind of a happy accident. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, broken G. All right, let's get the distortion working the way it should. Um, do I even have an overdrive plugin? Jeez, you'd think I would have something. I guess this will just, this will have to do. I'm so not happy with it. Because it's not real. <laughs> That's why. Maybe just a little bit too, um, pitchy. Maybe I can get like, I don't know. I don't want to sit here and tweak this for hours. I can just play the dang thing. Part of me really likes high. Part of it likes it low. Can I do both? Will it work? Take that advice. Uh, good EQ advice. Advice from Michael. Thanks. So I'm gonna open up a, an EQ for the guitar. He says cut the middle frequencies, leave the highs and lows. Let's see what that feels like. Cool suggestion. Thanks, man.
car makes it. Let me do the same thing on the main lead for guitar. Drop that mid and then boost it a little bit. need something in the middle it's, it's still dropping too much energy maybe these need to continue maybe the strings need to continue that might be part of it so let me take away the melody which is not very strong at the moment It, it needs to continue the energy. I like it a lot. This is super cool. In this track, the strings are basically percussion. Like they're really helping to keep the rhythm. So here it is by itself. where it's really helpful to use something like Adagietto that has a speed knob. So what this does is it actually compresses the attack and the release 
of the sample. So when the speed is really high, it's going to sound like a, a machine gun, and it's going to sound super fake. But the more instruments you have going on, the more you need that compression to help make it feel metronomically accurate. Because as soon as you put it down to zero, it's going to be very sloppy, which sounds cool when it's by itself. It sounds musical. And I also made a point to not use any far mic today because I really want this to be just one mic position, very heavily processed. That is the style we're going for. And that's why, again, the over the top OTT is on the strings to really keep it controlled. And actually at the moment, it's actually too loud. Um, so we pull it back a little bit and that, that extra motion should really help fill that section in. We're getting close to being done now. <laughs> All right, so here's one of those moments where MIDI is just gonna screw with us. So I'm actually going to render that choir track in place so that we can manipulate the audio itself, the volume of certain elements, louder, and it's easier to work with the MIDI. And yeah, it's worth sitting here for a minute and letting it export. Um, Logic does this. I wish Pro Tools did this better. It doesn't have a bounce in place option, but this is called render in place inside Cubase, and it just allows us to um, get that whole track as an audio clip and we can actually it at the exact moment we want it to be uh, softer. I don't do a ton. The choir is one of those things that, um, specifically like this patch, it has a way of being super loud in certain moments and super quiet in other moments mainly when it's in low, the lower register, the male register is not as loud sonically as bright. So I can boost just that portion of it. I can't do that in so much time and I can just really see the way Alrighty, I think it's ready. So I'm gonna mute the choir and now I just have this beautiful I'm gonna call it BIP, bounce in place choir. So you'll notice how the waveform actually looks a little bit different in the first half versus the second half. So I'm actually gonna take just this chunk, I'm gonna increase the volume by, I don't know, three or four dB. And then I'm gonna take my range tool and I'm gonna create a little crossfade between those two, so that way it's gonna increase in volume as we get there. And now, this should make a whole lot more sense. I'm also just gonna go through and do some little fades in and out, just that way it sounds a little more musical. Get these reverb tails. We'll do the same thing here. We can get it to start exactly where we want it to. And even this reverb tail is unnecessary and make it a loop but anyway let's see what it sounds like now that i've bumped that one choir bit <laughs> feeling almost done. This is feeling slightly clunky here.
that's all right. We need something to double it that's going to have some bite. So this is where to real it's like 90% produced, but we really need to get some more clarity is a synth. So long as, you know, the environment can handle it, which I think we can just fine. I'm going to grab zebra and I'm going to make a synth lead to double. And if it feels out of place, so be it, you know, you don't have to use it, but I do think this would be a very nice addition to the palette. I typically wait to add synths at the very end of something just to make sure it's not necessary. Um, but here's a moment where just from a production standpoint, we could really use something to... Maybe not that sound, but get the idea. fits really well. It's very retro. I'll turn it down a little bit. It's pretty hot. put it down here so I can actually see what's going on. unnecessary synth synth lead solo <laughs> Thing. Uh, we would, I would use it right here only. some options. I think it helps to give a lot of clarity to the the motion of the melody because the strings just get specifically with sampled strings they're going to get a little bit sluggish when they're, when they're the main thing. Sphere is going to be a better choice. I forget something a little bit different. Something a little bit thicker. More EDM based. Give it a second to load. I mean, we're just, we're in like the last 5% of production here. So we can afford a few minutes to experiment. Let me go to synth. 
long. Just kind of explore a little bit. Oh no. I'm gonna need something that's a little bit more like bold. So like aggressive synth probably. A lot of my uh, Omnisphere like sound bass is missing. I don't know what happened. That's not good. Omnisphere is just not going to work for me today. Um, where else can I look? Maybe Mass would might be a good spot. You guys give me sick. Hey, sorry guys, sorry to disappear for a minute. I uh, had to take a quick call. Um, so I need to finish this stream and I think we're super close to finishing. So what I wanna try to do is get this synth lead, something that kind of works. So what I'm gonna do is go to, no, no, my, my whole massive thing is, I recently moved a bunch of my sample libraries to a different drive and so they don't load. I haven't, I haven't taken the time to go through. Uh, massive X will be probably the right spot. So I want to do synth lead. Let's just kind of play around. I kind of, that's kind of cool. Trying not to do is go like into dance territory.
going to say no to the synths because we've made it all the way here with using the same palette, orchestral palette. <laughs> of this That's what I'll do. I'm going to double the horn this way. I think that's it. Uh, the last little thing I want to do is slap on my favorite mastering plugin called Ozone. And inside, this thing is absolutely amazing. It can make anything sound better. You don't want to overdo it, but this is a really great place to lean into specific genres if you wish. So I think this needs, I don't know if I want to hit metal necessarily but might be, might be a good place to start let's see what that does to it um definitely going to bump the volume i don't know if i want to bump the volume i'm actually going to fix a little bit of that let's see what happens so there's a little eq dip in the mids uh, there's a little bit of stereo imaging a little bit of uh, compression and maximizing boosts the volume and and keeps a um limiting ceiling so let's see what that does to it should make it really nice i already don't like it <laughs> oh man let me choose a different one i just don't think it's going to work let me try maybe let me look at my options maybe punchy and clear is a good good one If you do a preset, you don't like it, you can do individual presets for each of the plugins, which is super cool. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just kind of experimenting with what I like better.
All right, friends, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, but I want to play out the final version of my track for Fire Emblem Warriors. It's been a super fun stream. Thank you guys for being so active in the chat and asking lots of great questions and chiming in and helping me write better music. Um, this was super fun and a really unique experience of combining the orchestral with the rock. And uh, I like it. So I hope that you enjoyed this as well. This is a, a piece of music that's going to end up on a game music pack in the future. I always take these and, and combine them together and organize them for later use in games. Um, that's why I have so many tracks, because I'm always writing. So I hope that you guys... Why are you saying no, Steven? What in the world? Um, you, don't want, you don't want the stream to end? Well, it's got to end eventually, and the track's done. So I got other stuff to do. So hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thanks for hanging out. Um, I chose to just do a one-minute track today as a loop. It's not as long as I want it to be, but um, I don't particularly want to be writing for the two hours. So I think it was, it was a solid well-produced amount of music for one minute. It was pretty good. So thanks, guys, for hanging out. Let's play out the final version, and you have a lovely afternoon. I'll see you guys next week. And remember, click on that link in the description below, right there, boom, videogamemusicalliance.com, and you can join the wait list for when we open next week, next week only, for the next enrollment period of Video Game Music Alliance, the number one community for leveling up as a video game music composer. All right, guys, take care. See you later.